In this video, we're going to talk about chemical reactions. So first, we need to talk about chemical properties. The ability of a substance to undergo a specific chemical change is called a chemical property. So for example, iron plus oxygen forms rust. So the ability to rust is a chemical property of iron. When you have a chemical change, the composition of matter always changes. When we're done rusting the iron, it's no longer iron anymore. It's iron oxide. It's very brittle and not, not as strong as iron once is. So the composition changed. That's how I know that was a chemical reaction that happened. So to see a chemical property, you have to do a chemical reaction. If you're done observing the property and you've changed the chemistry of the substance, it's a chemical property. So if I've observed that iron rust in the presence of oxygen and turns into iron oxide, I've changed the chemistry of the iron. It's no longer iron anymore. It's iron oxide. So that's how I know the ability to rust is a chemical property. If, however, you're done observing the property and you did not change the chemistry of the substance, that makes it a physical property. So if I look at a piece of iron and I see that it's kind of silvery colored, and I'm done, it's still iron. I didn't change it, I just looked at it. And so the color of iron is a physical property. I didn't change the chemistry to observe that property. Therefore, it's physical. So here's an example regions question uh, that kind of hits on this topic here. We have five cubes of iron that are tested in the laboratory. The tests and the results are shown in the table below. Go ahead and read that table below and try to figure out which tests demonstrate chemical properties. The answer of course is three, test two and test four. So test two said a cube of iron is placed in three molar hydrochloric acid. So we're reacting the iron with the acid and the result is bubbles of gas form. That's evidence of a chemical reaction. We're gonna talk about that uh, in a little minute, in a little bit in this video. But that is evidence of a chemical reaction. So that makes it a chemical property the ability to react with HCl, hydrochloric acid. And test four says a cube of iron is left in damp air and the cube rusts. Well, we just talked about that. The ability to rust is a chemical property because when you're done, the rust or iron oxide has different chemical properties, different chemical composition than the original iron. So chemical reactions are when one or more substances are changed into new substances. So for example here, I have a hypothetical equation, A plus B makes AB. Um, our reactants is the stuff that you start with, the stuff on the left hand side of the arrow. A plus B, or A and B are reactants. The product is what you make, so what we made was AB. AB is different, it's a different composition, there's a bond there that's implied by those two elements being next to each other that makes it new and different from A or B. Like I said, the products will have new properties that are different from the reactants that you started with. It's always the case in a chemical reaction. So, um, there are five things that are little clues that you should recognize when a chemical change is happening. Number one is that energy is changed. There's a change in energy. Either energy is absorbed or energy is released. And that's going to be a big part in this course later on. We'll talk about those energy changes and how we quantify them. Another clue is that sometimes you get a color change. Uh, sometimes the color of the elements change when they react. And, some elements, uh, some compounds, specifically change color. We call those indicators. We'll be using those in reactions in class. Uh, clue three is a gas production. Sometimes when chemicals react, one of the products is a gas, which will either bubble a solution or create a vapor or create fumes that you can smell. Clue four is the formation of a precipitate. A precipitate is an insoluble solid. Uh, so you mix two liquids together and you get a solid. It's called a precipitate. And clue number five is irreversibility, meaning it's not easily reversed. You can't take the products and turn them back into the reactants that you started with. Now there are examples of these that are not chemical. Um, and not every chemical change will have all of these uh, you know, five things happening. Some reactions are reversible. 
sometimes you can have gas produced that is not a chemical reaction, like boiling water. If you boil water, you'll get bubbles. Uh, that doesn't mean you're doing a chemical reaction on the water. It's actually a physical change. Uh, but these are the five clues that you should tend that we tend to look for when we're looking at chemical reactions to decide whether a chemical change is taking place or not. The last thing I want to talk about is the law of conservation of mass. In any chemical reaction, the mass of the products is always equal to the mass of the reactants. So let's go back to our hypothet hypothetical equation here. A plus B makes AB. If A weighed 2 grams and B weighed 2 grams, what would be the mass of our product AB? Well, the law says that the mass of the products is always equal, so of course it's 4. Now, I know this probably seems really easy, but this is a question that is often missed on the regents because sometimes kids don't understand what they're supposed to do on this question. Let me show you an example. Given the balanced equation representing a reaction, we have sodium plus chlorine making sodium chloride and energy. If 46 grams of sodium and 71 grams of chlorine react completely, what is the total mass of the sodium chloride produced? Go ahead and try to answer this question. When you're done, I'll go over it. Okay, so what I like to do on questions like this is I like to write on the equation the masses that are given. So it says 46 grams of sodium, so I'll go ahead and write that there, plus 71 grams of chlorine, so I'll write that underneath the chlorine. If I take 46 plus 71 and add that together, I get 117 grams. So according to the law of conservation of mass, the total mass of the sodium chloride produced would be also 117 grams, which is choice two. So here's a little video that I filmed to demonstrate the law of conservation of mass. So I have two beakers on this scale, and in the beaker on the left, I'm putting in one compound. And you can see the weight going up as I add the compound. On the right, I'm putting in another compound, and it weighs 46.8 grams. Then I'm going to take the beaker on the left and pour it into the one on the right, and I can see a chemical reaction. I have that clue of a color change. The reason the color change is it actually made a precipitate um, in that beaker. And of course, you can see that the weight still stayed the same, 46.8 grams. Now, I did a chemical reaction, and I didn't create any mass. I didn't destroy any mass. I just altered the bonds on the chemicals that I mixed together. Okay, so in review here, a chemical property is the ability to undergo a chemical reaction. Remember this phrase, to see a chemical property, you need to do a chemical reaction. You need to do a chemical change. A chemical reaction is when one or more substances changes into new substances. And those substances are always going to have different properties than the original. There are five clues that a chemical reaction has taken place. I want you to know these clues and be able to look for them uh, in the laboratory so you'll know when a chemical reaction is happening and when it isn't. That's the end of this video, and if, I, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know.